And when you have something like this, you know what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do with that? I could pack that, with, I could fill it with some caulking and stuff, which I, which I might do some caulking and then you can put spackle in, but if you got a hole in there, uh, what are you gonna, how are you gonna hold it in there? Well, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some shipping tape, some packing tape, uh, and I can cut a little piece and I can put it over the outside edge and I can let, let it push in a little bit and, and just around here and that'll kind of hold the back side so I can fill it with some caulking after that and then on the out, outside I'll put some spackle over the top of the shipping tape I think I've already I've already kind of thought of that and you know I don't really have to do that but because there's a the little bit of the sheetrock back there I can just put caulking in there and let it dry and then put another layer and then once that dries then I can fill the rest up with uh, with spackle. Now I'm going to get the spackle. I had some here. I think Mommy just threw it away. Where is it? They have different spackle at the store. They got lightweight spackle. Well, this is not a lightweight. This is this is the heavy stuff, and this is called dry decks. I, we're throwing it away because it's dry. Uh, the last bit here is no good. So I'm going to get some more. And see, it says goes on pink, dries white when it's time to sand and paint. So then you know. When it's when it's dry all the way before you, so maybe you need to put two coats on don't put the second coat on until you see it's white then you can lightly sand it before you get ready to paint so you can do something like that they also have lightweight spackle which is non shrinking spackle and that's and that's a little bit different but I'm gonna I'm gonna end up using this kind of stuff on, on, on here because I need a little bit of wet spackle so that I can kind of see we got some spray texture on here it's, it's this is called a spray texture light knockdown. See how it's flat here? What they would do is they spray, they spray this on and then they take a trowel and, and they have to, they wait for it to dry a little bit, then they take a trowel. You can see here's an edge to the trowel mark right there. See it? I'll have to, oh, in fact, maybe I should get that off right now. But see, I, I'm, gonna end, I'm gonna end up going around and doing a once over on the walls and fill along there on anything that needs to be that needs to be uh, scraped like that I can scrape when I see little holes you know where there was a screw like or, or a tack or something if there was a screw there for a picture or something I, I, I scrape that first with my putty knife okay now I just take a Phillips screwdriver and I take that and just kind of indent it in like that. That pushes all the edges down, plus it gives me a little area for the caulking to fill in there. And, and, I, might, and I might put caulking in there and set a spackle on those. And I can put just a little bit of caulking and wipe it off. You put, you put too much spackle on there. I've seen it cracks me up. Somebody will take a putty knife like this and they'll take spackle as wide as the putty knife and go Arr! And after you paint, oh yeah, fine. You can't really see it straight on, but if you look at it at an angle, you, you see exactly where the spackle, oh, there's a mark, there's a mark, there's a mark. Look at all these patches the guy did. It looks awful. And, and, and somebody will say, oh yeah, Joe did that. Doesn't it look great? Somebody will say, yeah, it looks like crap. Because he didn't know what he was doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing. And so I'll take it and, and after I get it ready, I'll put a little bit more on there. And, and I might even do it with caulking after the, the spackle dries a little bit right in there and then put a little bit on or dab, dab, dab and then take my putty knife and go whoosh, like that to give it that, that little skip trowel look like this, see? That way it matches. When I did these, you look on the corner, see I've got to do some spackle in there. Oh, looks like my battery's about dead. I better change this before it, it cuts off. Okay, I'll be right back to finish up this video. Oh cool, I'm back. I just put a new battery in. This battery is good for 10 and 3 quarter hours. That's because it's a big fat battery. If you got a video camera and you want to get some you want to get some nice batteries. They they generally give you some some little thin batteries. And uh, let's see here. Let's just pull you out a couple batteries. This is what usually comes with your video camera, something like this. If you're lucky, you might get something like that. But I think it came with this one here. And what I did is I went to the store. 
I got them from Amazon, I believe. Look how fat that battery is. See there, 10 and 3 quarter hours is what that one's gonna give me. And I got a battery charger at home for, for all, all kinds of these batteries. I always have extra batteries ready and waiting for me, okay? I got my other battery in there. I'll have to make sure that I, uh, I charge that. Okay. So, I'm, I'm almost done making this, this little video, but I, you're, gonna, you're gonna end up finding different holes that you're gonna have to do. Don't, don't stress over it. Know that, you know, hey, you're gonna have to take your time. You're gonna have to get it all ready. It's one step at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you do a paint job like this? One step at a time. Just concentrate on one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. And uh, there's, all, there's all kind of like a sequence in, in what has to be done. And I'm still in the middle of it. Molly went to the store and she asked me if I'm good. I, I was gonna get ready to do some caulking and I was gonna do some spackling. But, but we, initially we had a guy who was gonna help us, crack me up. He, he said it was a contractor and I don't know if he's a real contractor or not. He didn't have any tools with him. He, he went to the store and got some stuff and he didn't have anything with him. And you know, here, here's, one of, here's one of the things. He got some caulking, okay, that's good enough, but he got clear. I am not gonna use clear uh, when I need to do all this caulking because then uh, lots of times it doesn't cover in one coat. But, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna end up using white. And I don't necessarily have to use Dynaflex 230. I can use, I can use something else. I'll go back to the store and, and see, this is for like exterior, see window, door, siding, and trim. I mean, I could use it for here, but I'm gonna use some painter's caulking probably, and I, it'll probably be Alex, Alex 7, or I, I forget what, what I end up using. Oh, I got, I got one right over here. I ended up bringing some, see, white from DAP. This is called Alex Plus, and this is 40 year. They have 20, 30, 40 year and stuff. This is, this is windows, doors, molding, trim, base, boards. This is like a painter's caulking. They also have another one that doesn't have, and it's a paintable all-purpose acrylic latex caulk plus silicone, but it's paintable. Usually, if you get clear silicone, you can't paint over that. Make sure you get something that is paintable, and uh, painters usually will use something a little bit less than this. It's, it's more dry. It's not as, as shiny as this, and it doesn't have any silicone. So you can use either or. It's no big deal. You know, so anyways, he, he ended up getting some blue tape and he got the real wide tape. You know, he, this is only three rolls, but got a little bit thinner tape. You probably get about six rolls for uh, maybe the same price as that tape. And so I'm gonna end up taking that back. I, I had one small little roll of tape here. Here, here we go. This is like inch and three eighths. I think they, I don't know if they call it inch, inch and, uh, they might call it inch and a half and it's actually a little bit smaller. This is like inch and three eighths. And um, I ended up, uh, I'll use that for some stuff, but I need some more. I, I could use regular masking tape or I could use the blue tape. Regular masking tape is cheaper than the blue tape and um, it works almost as good, but I'll, I'll probably end up getting the blue tape. The blue tape's a little bit more expensive. The, the thing with the blue tape is you put that on there, you can leave it on there for four or five days and then pull it off, supposedly without, without it peeling up any of your new paint or, or your old paint or something like that. Whereas if you use regular masking tape, uh, and if you leave it on there too long and you pull it off, it's gonna be, it could be sticky, it might not come off all the way. You might be you know, saying a few choice words, thinking I knew I should have used the blue tape that Joe told me I should use at the store. Yeah, something like that. See, here, here's some more patches. I, you know, once I start doing cleanup and stuff, I, I, I can kind of see the different things that I'm up against and I'll, and I'll look at all this stuff. I, I've got some marks on the walls and I ended up not having any Kills Primer, so I'm gonna get some Kills Primer at the store. So when I see any, any marks, that I don't think I can get off with my putty knife, let's say, or my, uh, my simple green, then I'll go back and, I'll, and I'll, I'll dab a little bit of, of, uh, 
uh, kills here, 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 you know, wherever I have to. And then when I get ready to paint, this is all semi-gloss paint. It's designed for one coat, but before, you know, when I get in there with the roller, I'll, I'll hit all the areas that I put primer on first, where I did a little spot primer. That way I already got one coat of, of finished paint on there. And then I'll go around and start doing the whole thing with the roller. And then when I come to it, I'll be able to throw a second coat on there. That's how I'll end up doing that. Okay. And so, you know, lots more things I could tell you, but you get the, you get the idea, I think. You know, hey, you don't have to... Hire a contract. If you hire a contract to do this job, they'd probably charge you fifteen thousand dollars or more. And that that doesn't include the carpet. The carpet would be oh, that's a carpet guys uh, thing. We're we ended up. This is a four bedroom uh, house. No no carpet in the hallways or anything. Obviously, no carpet out here in the kitchen or the uh, or the dining uh, dinette area or the living room, family room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was like less than $1,200, so it really doesn't cost that much. You know, we got two prices. One guy was like $1,450, another one was $1,125 or something. And so there's a tip for you. Whenever you get ready to do something, even for your painting, get two prices. Do, get two quotes. If you're not in a hurry, get three quotes. But make sure it's like for like for everything because on the carpet, there was three different styles. There was three different... Uh, 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 thicknesses, three different uh, types of carpet. We didn't want the cheap stuff, but we didn't want the real expensive stuff. We wanted kind of mid-grain, mid-average, and that's, that's what he's basing it on. Same thing with the carpet pad. We didn't want the really super cheap stuff. We didn't really want the super expensive stuff. We wanted the, the middle of the road stuff, and, and so that's how we're doing it. If it's, if it's for your house, maybe you're going to want the higher end if you can afford that. Okay? So, anywho, I'm still at it. I've got a lot I can do without even picking up my caulking gun yet. Like I say, I don't have any caulking because the guy got the clear and I'm not going to use the clear. He, he was going to do it and at the last minute he, he, he went for lunch. I mean, he, he got one little ceiling painted for us in here, it didn't, it didn't even have time to cut it in yet. He had one guy kind of cutting in, and I, I don't know where he started. Oh, they started cutting in over here. I know I'm gonna have to do it over because it didn't get enough on there. I can already see uh, that little bit along there that it didn't get on there thick enough. See, I can still see some right up there in the ceiling. And so, anyways, he did, he did that, and he was leaving for lunch. He took his roller, he went outside in the backyard, he got the hose out. And where do you suppose he was cleaning out his roller? Now I'll show you. This is, where he, this is where he cleaned out his roller. Well, that's all I got for this time. But I'll be back with more videos.